Hey guys, welcome back to How To Escape. Today we're going to be doing a brief tutorial on removing the front bumper cover. This is a 2013 1.6 liter SE, and we're gonna be removing this step by step, and I'm gonna be showing you things that you can do to speed up this process. It's not overly difficult, it's just a lot of screws, but we can keep that organized and do a good job. Tools include a seven, eight, 10 millimeter socket, socket wrench and extensions, an optional U-joint, power drill, which is helpful, Plastic pry tools, Phillips driver, small flathead driver, T30 torques, jack stands, and pucks for lifting. Remember, any step in this procedure needs to be done on both sides of your escape. So just to save some time, we already have the car up on jack stands in the front and contacting the ground in the back. There's a chalk behind the back wheel, even though the car is in park. The front wheels are off the ground just enough for clearance so that you can still turn the wheels manually by hand side to side if you want. The splash shield is removed by just removing the three screws in the back, the four screws in the front, and one on each side. If you need a tutorial for any of these, please check out the links above. All right, we're gonna start by removing these, this trim panel that goes around the wheel well, as well as this block here. There, there are two plastic nut rivets here. There's one, two, three here, one, two there as well as one, two, three, four, seven millimeter fasteners. Once you take all of those out, you pull this out here. We can manually turn the wheel this way. Seven millimeter socket. Then we want to remove one, two, three, four, five fasteners here, and then two on the underside. Now that we have all of these fasteners removed, we should be able to pull the whole piece out. One thing to note here when you're taking off your wheel well liners is that you have these white trim buttons probably you know, every foot or so along the radius of your wheel well. If you can at least push down and get that top tab to be depressed, it'll be a lot easier when you're trying to pry it out. You may need to order some spares though when you're putting them back on because sometimes they do break. Now we're going to go back and we're going to remove one, two, three more seven millimeter fasteners. Okay. So with the splash shield off, we're going to be removing our last remaining visible um, T30 screws. There are three of them. Next, we're going to be doing all remaining 7mm fasteners all along the bumper cover. There should be 14 altogether. So to note when looking under the corner of the bumper cover, there should be trim fasteners here, one on each side that you need to pull out as well. Mine was missing them. Next, we're going to remove the latch for your hood by taking off these two 8mm screws. Next, we have nine trim fasteners to remove. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, all nine removed. Here they are. We can now lift this tray up, including this. Flip it back over there. Now we're going to take out the top fasteners here. We have a one seven millimeter fastener on either side for a total of two, and then seven 10 millimeter fasteners going all the way across the ends. Looking inside, right above the wheel well, you have three 10 millimeter bolts on each side right here, those three gray ones. Those are gonna need to come out. 
You can reach in through the top, but you might be twisting your arm and it might be hard to get to. One more thing you can do for better access is to come outside and remove any remaining fasteners that might stop this wheel well from coming down. And once you do that, you have straight access to reach up there and get those bolts out. Something that made this job a lot easier with getting those screws out was to get a quarter inch long straight extension with a quarter inch universal joint, a shorter extension, and then your 10 millimeter socket. If you reached under into the wheel well with the drill and reached over around your headlight and down to find the footing and connect the 10 millimeter socket to the head of the bolt and just hold it down here and keep your fingers clear of this U-joint, you could actually make quick work of getting those screws out. If you don't have this stuff, a regular socket wrench will do, but in those tight quarters, you just don't have much room for strokes, so this drill was a big help. Whatever your method, these screws must be removed and just take some time. Eventually, you will get all six out. Looking right in front of the driver's front wheel, um, you have the engine control module here. You have the fog light housing assembly on the other side of this. There is a wire harness that needs to be disconnected before we pull the bumper off, and this connects all of the main bumper mounted electronics. I've already loosened it for the sake of the video so I can do this one handed, but disconnect that. Before we go to pull our bumper cover off, make sure that you're clearing those little nubs on the top right here. Another thing to note where those three screws were just removed, before the bumper can drop, there are two tabs that you snap into place here that holds the bumper in position so that you can put the three screws back in later. Press those two tabs back and then drop the bumper down. You should start to see it separate as you push those tabs down. All right, now I'm just gonna kind of massage it all out of place. There is your bumper assembly. All right, now that we have our bumper cover removed, there's really a lot of things that you can do and get to. Um, you could replace your headlights, you could get to your horn, you can get to your washer fluid reservoir, you can get to your fog lights, your parking lights, and your turn signals. Um, there's a lot you can do once you pull off this bumper cover. Alright, so we have the bumper cover fully reassembled and in place. Everything's pulled back together. I just want to give a few tips here that will hopefully save you all some time and aggravation when getting this back together. first one is looking where the bumper cover slides into the headlight. There are little tabs which will tuck into this gap right under the headlight and they kind of grip into snaps. So when you're trying to align the bumper when reinstalling it, make sure that those tabs are tucked in on both sides under both headlights. Alright, second is this body panel gap between the front bumper cover and the front quarter panel where you have the three screws that are kind of difficult to get to. Make sure that this gap is fully closed. If you see it open, but you thought you remembered tightening your screw all the way, there's probably something wrong with your fastener. And check that out before you button everything back up. With this trim molding here, get those white clips, even if they've snapped a little bit, see if you can get them to sit back into those um, little notched areas on the back side. Walk your hand up and around the molding and press those white snaps in and they'll hold them in place long enough for you to start aligning these holes. If these holes for these plastic fasteners and these seven millimeter fasteners do not line up perfectly, you can kind of squeeze and push the liner and this trim molding around so that you can line it up with the actual material on the bumper cover.
So that is it for this bumper cover removal and reinstallation process. If you thought this was helpful, give it a like and a share. If you have any tips and tricks that I did not do here, or if you have any other suggestions or comments, leave it in the comments section below here. We look forward to hearing from you. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel and be on the lookout for the Rarina Ford Escape app that is very close to being released. I'm still working on it, but we're going to have a lot of cool things in there. Thanks for watching How to Escape. We'll see you next time.